I get on the front of the boat, and I'm like, man, you put me on the front of the boat, I'm gonna keep missing. Put me back here, and I hit one for three. I'm doing way better in the head. And that, that was that was probably, honestly, the, the biggest thing is the mental game, getting over it. Yeah. Take a couple months off, shoot some deer, get back after it, it's way better now than I, I thought it'd ever be. It almost yeah. feels normal now. So we swung by Bass Pro. Oh yeah, coming through. Oh, close up there. <laughs> and uh, we're grabbing some reels, we're grabbing a cooler. Um, we're fixing to meet up with our little pirate friend, Robert. And uh, we're gonna go shoot some fish. It's gonna be nice tonight. We were gonna fish tomorrow night, but it's gonna be super cold and windy, so we kind of changed plans. We're fishing on a weeknight, and uh, it should be good. We're excited about it. It's first trip of the season, so hopefully it all goes good. Everyone makes fun of champion generators. These things will run forever. Yeah. I was dragging one down the road behind Louisville Dam. We were fishing, it had bumped out, fallen out, and it was dragging with a ratchet strap and an extension cord. And that's on its side for who knows how long. We turned it up, sat it up, waited like 15 minutes at the boat ramp, pulled her, and she started up. <laughs> I don't know how many lives that thing had, but it had plenty. That's a smoking deal, five by five dollars. Right? I've never been. <laughs> Let me know how that We got down here and it's a lot muddier than we were anticipating. Which is surprising because there wasn't a whole lot of rain. But this sucker is muddy. So we're going to see how it goes. But it's going to be tough to see these fish and get them on film. It yeah. is all of a sudden right here. Look up, look right here. Yeah. Why would that be like that? So ramps here, we're here, right there's where it gets skinny. Skinny? Yeah. Okay, we'll go there. At least it got clear for no, the if, you can, if we can just find the shallow water like that, but you like what Robert was saying, it's he usually runs on pad up to here. Yeah. And this is where he starts fishing. But still, it's never this muddy. But at the same time. You can leave that part out. I was, you know, trying to make it sound good, but you know. Yes, good job, Hey! Oh. Yeah. That know, was in the mouth. The that was in the mouth. You know, that's why you always have your proper hey. PPE. Oh, well, we almost gave up, is what we did. 
and ran to a different spot. The difference is I'm not a quitter. JJ's a quitter. I'm pretty sure someone else in the boat was like, so guys. <laughs> I have plan B. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Always buy plan B. Tip of the day. Hey, is my eye straight? <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. Hold on, you're making my, you're making my right eye straight. Dude, that's oh. a good fish. So if you look at my eye, you got this P. P goes Ooh. up. So. <laughs> Do you want an extra one? I can get one from this guy. So they call it, it a like smallmouth buffalo. buffalo. So anyways, the P's up, but if I turn it. So throughout the night, it might look like this, and I'm cross-eyed. So I got to spin it back around. You kind of look like this buffalo. So. You keep, the clarity's only good in about right there. <laughs> I like it. That was a Dustin Cole hey, laugh if hey, I've ever heard one. Do you, do you need fish help, <laughs> sir? I need fish help. Hold on, let me get you help you out. Mega mouth can't pull him in. <laughs> Look at the gut on that baby. Look at the gut on that one. I mean, this one's a little more predominant. Dude, that's a good fish. She's four over forty. You don't think so? Thirty-nine point eight, maybe. Yeah. Thirty-eight. No, that's a good buff. This is what we got going on. We're not really sure, and it's a little bit chaotic because it's the first trip out of the season, breaking the boat in, and we've kind of forgot how to do all this. Robert's, it's super clear, is not super clear. Things get. He might have been looking different. through his bad eye. I don't really know. <laughs> but it's been super muddy until you get about a foot and a half, two foot of clarity. So we ran up on pad on these little shoals and kind of figure out the pattern of what these buffs are doing. And it seems like all the big fish are there. So we just got into them. We shot a couple really good ones. Actually one good one, two small ones, but that's neither here nor there. Oh, you gotta wait. 
So it goes by the corner. Did you? Okay. Hey, Ryan, right here, big one. Big one, big one, big one. Got it, Ryan. Is that way I can mute yours and you don't know? Alright, we're good. We good? Start over? Yep. Alright, so what we wanted to do is, uh, this is our first outing of the season. Oh my goodness, what is going on here? It's our first outing of the season, and uh, we're here back. Robert was with us, and a lot of the comments on our YouTube channel all the time is like, where's Robert? Where's he been? We haven't seen him on any videos in a while. Well. Earlier this year, what was it? Uh, uh, what month? April the uh, 16th. April the 16th, Robert was out bow fishing uh, with a friend of his and had a major bow fishing accident. And uh, go ahead and tell us a little bit what happened that night. Uh, anyways, yeah, we were fun fishing, shooting some spawning fish, and uh, ended up drawing back to the carp spawning and you know shooting tied the back and had my bow. Uh, the line ended up half hitching against the bottom of my slick right here ended up having a snap back and I shot my eye out and so the arrow the knock hit you or the point the knock hit me yeah the knock went in and uh, whenever it happened I thought I, I broke the power cable or something I didn't really know what happened because I drew back shot and it kind of just you know I fell down and got up and my bow was in the water and didn't know what happened and uh, you know I knew I couldn't see obviously but my eyes are all watery like I got slapped in the face but anyways we uh I stood up and asked the person with me if I was bleeding or not because I felt pain right here they said I wasn't bleeding I said awesome cool and like about that time body parts started to kind of fall out and I was like oh and uh ended up trying to find my bow real quick and couldn't find it and pinned the spot and I ended up called my dad and I said you know it was like 9 30 at night and I was like hey I had a really bad accident I need you to meet me at this boat ramp and I love you and I hung up on him and uh, I sent a snapchat out to a couple of my buddies saw a snapchat I got it yeah it was gnarly yeah and uh, on his I'm gonna interrupt I open up the snapchat and there's all this blood running down his face and in the middle of all the blood is this white Goo, the center it was, of my eye. and it was the center of his eye that had been punctured. Yeah, and it was actually leaking down his cheek. Yeah, it's, it's pretty bad. And so, took some. I think I took honestly my Under Armour uh, undershirt on and tied up a uh, tourniquet. Get back to the boat ramp. EMS is there. My dad's there. Uh, some of my other family members that deal with the boat. They get me all strapped up. 
Next thing you know, they're trying to air life me all the way up to Austin and uh, went into emergency surgery to try to repair my eye. And they, they, they stopped counting at 60 something stitches trying to wow. repair it. But, uh, you know, I had a detached retina, uh, missing cornea, uh, my iris was gone, and my uh, lens was shattered and then like 100 different pieces. So, I mean, it was pretty roasted. But I remember you were telling me that it was like three more millimeters. Yeah, another. It said like, you know, another quarter inch at the most. It would have, it should have killed me. But it stopped. You know, it, it actually had bruising on the back of my, whatever the eye socket, the technical term is. is that, that took the bug. That took probably four or five months to heal. But so then you lost your sight. So he's right eye dominant, yeah. and I mean he's shot ASA, competitive archery, big time bow hunter. All that stuff, bow fishing, bow fishing tournaments for how long? Well, 2010, to, nah, 2008. Yeah, 2008. 2008. Yeah, I remember when me and Dustin won Texas State and Anahuac, you were yeah. there fishing with two yeah. guys, yeah. and you were like 12. Yeah, yeah. straight up 12. Yeah, you were 12, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, completely lost, he lost his right eyeball. Yeah. Like, it's gone. So he's got a prosthetic in there now, and he's going to pull it out for us, because, I mean, who doesn't want to see that? Handcrafted, painted the match. <laughs> Clean one over. <laughs> just flash at it. AMS. So, um, so talk to us about what it was like to, going from like right eye dominant, and then all of a sudden losing that. Like, what was the adjustment period? Uh, Obviously, you guys have seen him tonight. You'll see him tonight. I mean, he still shoots fish like nothing's ever happened. You know, and, so he had to retrain himself how to do that. So break that down. You know, when I had my accident, it was like, you know, after I got out of the hospital, it was like I can still see everything seems normal. You just, I lose vision from about here over instead of having an extra 10 degrees or whatever. And uh, I thought, oh, I'll be walking the park, nothing bad. <laughs> so it's actually a little more than 10 degrees. <laughs> I, I thought it wouldn't be nothing too bad. Well, my doctor told me, like, all right, you can't do any heavy lifting, anything over, like, 25, 30 pounds. Well, my, you know, bow, I normally stay set at, set 24. So I kind of been in the rules there a little bit. And uh, I went out and shot the bow and the target, you know, 10, 15 times, and it's, like, 6, 8 inches to the left. I'm like, man, that's going to be kind of brutal. Start shooting more, start shooting more, and I am kind of gave up with it. A bunch of my buddies that all fish, too, for a couple of days are trying to shoot with one eye, and... I don't know. I kind of gave up for a little bit and then uh, went to a checkup and uh, they told me I would never see again. You know, life sucks, get it cut out, you know, learn, you know, adapt. So when it first happened, you didn't get it cut out. You were waiting no. to see. Well, no, I didn't even know. I thought when I, I thought when I was going into surgery, they were going to remove it and fix whatever was wrong. But when I woke up, it wasn't until I was leaving that they told me I still had an eye. And oh, I was okay. like, why did y'all, well, why? Yeah. And they didn't, you know, they just didn't want to take Just in the, case there's a chance. Yeah, if there's a chance, they don't want to take that from someone, and I don't blame them. And, uh, you know, a week and a half later, I went fishing again. And realistically, at the first six months outside of the depth perception issues, everything's dark on the water. You could have the best lights ever, and you couldn't see. I mean, I couldn't see. It was dim. It's like wearing sunglasses yeah. for you. And that was the hardest part. But... Other than that, I mean, a huge blind spot, but, you know, it, it took took some, I guess, getting used to when we snap shoot, learning, you know, if you pay attention, I generally shoot left now on a fish, but. I mean, they end up in the boat, so it works out, I yeah, guess. Yeah, if they go to the left, if they swim to the right, I'm going to miss them. <laughs> oh, it's super impressive yeah. for us. Like, we've always, I mean, we were obviously super worried when it happened. I mean, we fished together a bunch. Yeah. Well, and everyone's like, oh, you got to shoot left-handed now. And I told everyone, you know, everyone's got pride. Everyone's got ego. But, you know, you got all these people out here been doing something since they were kids. You know, would you want to shoot a bow left-handed tomorrow? Not a chance. Yeah. I'd quit before I would. Of course, I shoot a hunt bow left-handed. That don't count. Yeah. But. So, that's freaking awesome. So, then let's talk about, hit your button so your lines loose. Yeah. So, I, know, I mean, I would probably say 50% of people tied to the back before your eye accident. I would say more people tied to the back, it seems like. Like tournaments, like all the hardcore number shooters, not all of them, maybe 
85, 90%. They all tie to the back. They all hate on slides. And I've always shot slides. I've always been a big believer in them. I like it better. It just suits me. And then Robert had his accident. And it's been impressive to see that, I mean, a major percentage of shooters have switched to slides. It's just not worth it. And if you still tie to the back, I mean, you are playing with fire because you did, didn't you do a video? Yeah. You know, obviously tied to the back, everyone likes the fact if you don't push your button, your arrow gets pulled off. You get a little bit cleaner shot into the water. It's faster to retie if you break a knock or have yep. a fray. Uh, they're a little bit cheaper. Um, and, you know, there's a couple other things I'm sure I'm missing out. Um, a lot of people complain with the safety slide that there's a splash in the water. And if you don't push your button, the arrow doesn't get knocked off like you did with tied to the back, which is partially true depending on your exact setup. I will give them that. Uh, but as JJ and I and you know, a lot of other people that like slides that, you know, fish pretty regular. You know, we all agree that you're shooting fish. That slide gives you something to pull, hold on to when you pull your fish off, when you shake them off. Uh, I mean, you've shot with some of the best there are. Yeah. I've shot with tons of different people, some of the best there are. And I can promise you there's not a big enough difference worth taking that risk of tying no. straight to the back. No, and the, and the, the true issue with tied to the back, granted, I'm not tied to the back right now, you know, that's tight, that's normal. Well, when you pull back, I'm just gonna replicate it. You end up getting that much more line on the average draw. So until that line gets pulled out straight, this can just flop around. And the major misconception with tied to the back is we never thought about that. You know, I shot tied to the back. A lot of my teammates shot tied to the back. We always were worried about the real handle, the rest, your fingers, and not the fact that in slow motion, this has a likelihood to half hitch or overhand knot, and that's where the issue presents itself. And I mean, you saw the video Brady Green them did way back in the gap on bow fishing country. Yeah. You know, if you, if you have a, if it ties itself right there, it's gonna break almost every time at like seven, eight, 10, 12 pounds. You tie it back right there, you got a lot more string stretch, and you're playing with fire. Yeah, no doubt. One day you're gonna get bit. So, um, so shoot slides, guys. It's not worth it. I mean, how next, many world championship championships do you have? I've got slides? two. And the, I mean, the baddest dudes on the planet, Brandon, Craig, and Josh. They have eight, or Josh, or they have seven. Josh and Craig have seven, and Brandon has five. All of them been with slides. They got the world record most number of fish shot. I mean, the dudes have been around and. They're the best there is when it comes to numbers. And all, all the big fish guides, I say all of them, a lot of the real notorious ones, well, Scotty Meshel, you yeah. know, Mark Moffa, all the ones shoot big gator guard, because some people say you can't shoot big fish with safety slides. All shoot safety slides. Yeah, it's for sure worth it. So, awesome. We're glad you're back and shooting. Appreciate it. You're doing great. I mean, it's impressive, because I was worried about it. I mean, it's like a morale thing. Yeah. Like it, It's, you know, the mental game's a big issue. I mean, don't get me wrong first few tournaments back, you know, if I didn't feel like I was shooting strong, I'd sit back here on the back and do all the backup shots, clean up, because at least if I miss this fish after this guy missed this fish, it ain't on me. But I'm right here and I miss that fish, it's on me, you know? No different. And, uh, you know, I'd stand back here until I got my composure. You know, Dustin would be on the front of the boat, he'd be like, get up on the front of the boat. And I'm like, hey, look, give me a couple minutes. I'm a little flustered. He's like, no, I get on the front of the boat. And I'm like, man, you put me on the front of the boat, I'm going to keep missing. Put me back here and I hit one for three, I'm going to be way better in the head. And that, that was that was probably, honestly, the, the biggest thing is the mental game, getting over it. Yeah. Take a couple months off, shoot some deer, get back after it, and it's way better now than I, I thought it'd ever be. It almost feels normal now. Everything that could go wrong went wrong. But we got some good fish, we had a blast. Um, ignition relay went out, or ignition switch went out. So when we would turn the perk on, turn the key on, the boat would just start itself and just start doing its thing. And then while we were driving, it kept trying to start itself, so the starter was firing and hitting the flywheel and all that stuff. 
So we were down for about an hour, we had to figure that all out. But uh, you guys see the video, we shot a lot of big buffs, but it was muddy. But we had a blast, first time out of the season, breaking the boat in. So you guys make sure you uh, like, follow, subscribe, and let us know what you think. See you next time.